questions I would like to discuss in these 30 minutes. First of all, who's Zycon and why am I here? Very brief. Um, what do I actually mean with this zone of value? Because it's, it's basically a marketing name, isn't it? Um, and how does our technology fit into that? Um, then there's an elephant in the room. I will get back to that later. And, um, and then what's now? And how do we go, uh, how we, we go forward? Talking about Zycon, um, I like this picture a lot and I frequently use it because it's not only back in the days when people uh, still wore ties to work. I'm not wearing a tie right now from my home office, but um, these are the, if I can call them the founding fathers. So our company started in 1988 in digital printing. And in 1993, uh, at IPEX Birmingham, we brought our first digital color press to the market. So basically simultaneously with Benny Landa at the time. So it, it, it's debatable on who was first. Uh, but anyway, that's the first digital full color production press for graphic arts that was brought to the market. And ever since we have continued to develop our technology, perfect our technology, we went faster, wider, higher resolution, more colors. We ventured into new um, applications like labels where we have become very successful now, um, folding carton uh, and carton packaging. And being a, a technology agnostic company, we also ventured into um, single pass UV inkjet for labels and also single pass water-based inkjet for corrugated. So we also have developed technology for that. So just to mention, it started more than three decades ago and we continue to be, um, to be successful and develop different uh, technologies for various applications. Now, I think that's enough because you're not here for a presentation on Zycon, you're here to, to talk about this, this zone of value. Now, what do I mean with that, that marketing term? Instead of showing you immediately uh, specs and machines and, and things like that, let's go back to the basics. So why, why are we in this business as I, I think each and every one of you, if you're, mentioned, if you're running a business or running a team or whatever, you ask yourself probably every morning when you get up, why am I in this business? Well, for Zycon, um, in graphic arts, we want to provide an alternative for high-risk investments and high-risk investments that have actually been brought to the market in a relentless race for more and more volume to produce faster at lower costs, reducing margin and pricing, and, and also printing or flooding the market with commoditized print, basically. We believe that there is um, um, a segment, a number of segments of high-value applications where we think, and we see that from experience with our customers, our Zycon technology excels and helps people be successful. Uh, that's the why. And, and how do we do that? We, we conceive and we develop uh, solutions that allow to print high coverage color graphics without substrate constraints at an acquisition cost that is affordable and for all during the entire year. So not, not also when there's a peak volume, but also when the volumes are slow and are lower, let's say. All this while offering capacity to meet the customer's volumes. Next to that, we also would like to offer a more wide application range that goes beyond some traditional uh, print applications. That could be decor or security printing, for example. So as a mean to offer higher margin applications and, and provide incremental business to them. And then what comes at the end, basically, and it's not the first question, and that's why I'm saying, oh, I'm saying about technology, is that the right question? That's not the first question. It's actually a byproduct of our mission, is our technology. And that's the dry toner roll fed series technology that we recently brought to the market. And we think this can help customers to handle small print runs for mass customization on a wide variety of premium print applications in a very challenging environment because you're all professionals. So you know very well that if you look at the volume in graphic arts, the print volume overall is declining within the digital that's growing, the portion of digital is growing. Within digital, the inkjet volume pages are growing. Dry toner overall is decreasing, predominantly because of the black and white volume that's disappearing. But dry toner color volume is still growing at a steady pace. And that's, and that's where we are in. Challenging environment, how has the pandemic affected it? Um, there are a lot of sessions that you can follow, and I'm sure there are probably some very good, much better sessions that give you a view on the evolution of, of the business now following the pandemic. I'll just, I'll just give you my key, uh, key takeaways. Um, print buyer behavior has changed. Tighter budgets, shorter runs, different moments of ordering, that all has changed. 
the trend towards digital has definitely accelerated. Uh, we also know that some applications have suffered more than others. Book printing was up, at least in trade books. Educational were down. Direct mail took a plunge at some point when the shops were closed. Same for retail. They're now slowly recovering. I don't know, to be honest, what the future will bring. I, I don't think a lot of people know. The only thing is that there's insecurity and unpredictability, and that there will probably be a permanent reduction of volumes. And that actually makes my case of the previous slide even, even stronger. We've seen that quite a, quite a lot of companies uh, had suffered from the burden of high CAPEX commitments. An interesting thing that I also noticed is that the decentralized model definitely has its merits. And so we always took about, talked about print and distribute. Now we've seen because of a changing landscape, closed borders, transportation problems, et cetera, it could actually make sense to have a decentralized model with smaller footprint, uh, footprint equipment at lower capacity, but more flexible in use. And then I think as a general um, yeah, point is that flexibility and adaptability are the key values for, for survival, right? The rest of the things I leave to the, to the analysts, these are, these are my key takeaways. When I look at uh, the application versatility that I was talking about for the zone of value, these are the things that, that we are looking at and we are focusing on. It's high quality books, coffee table books, on thick stock, luxurious papers, coated papers, high coverage, uh, odd volumes. Same thing for direct mail on thick stock, uh, for, for fashion, jewelry, automotive, that kind of thing, where the Zycon comes in nicely because of the capability. Point of sales material, because, it, because of the, there's no fixed uh, frame size or there's a variable repeat length. You can print long banners, but you can also print shelf strips and, and wobblers if you want, posters. Wall decoration, pretty much of a niche. Security printing because of the yeah, security toners, micro text capability, high resolution screening, etc. So there's a whole host of applications that actually the list is pretty much endless. Then you have religious publications, 40 GSM are even lower, even high cover uh, coverage content you can print on that, uh, newspapers, photographic posters and calendars, very high resolution reproductions, um, leaflets, maybe pharmaceutical, nutritionals. You have to have some color content on a leaflet, printed duplex, maybe some brand colors, some camera inspection, and also some postcards. Again, it is endless. And that's what we call, you can call it the zone of territory, uh, sorry, the zone of value, you can call it the group printing territory. This is the solution that we would like to position there. And what were the development parameters when we looked at this uh, technology? It needed to have superior print quality, definitely market leading performance, sustainability was very important, application range was important, the best of class total cost of ownership, and the high OEE. And I will try to get back to each of those items in the rest of the presentation. But I think before we move on, it's important to, to uh, understand at least to have an insight on, on the Zycon technology, on how it works and, and why is it different. Well, first of all, you have, um, yeah, High resolution printing, 1200 DPI, four bit per spot. Um, that means that the native resolution of our imaging unit, an LED bar that we use, so we don't use a laser, but we use an LED bar, is 1200 DPI. So we have, you can write spots of 21 micro, and there is no dot gain because we don't use any liquid. Speed, I will get back to that later, 30 meters per minute, which is a, an acceptable speed, I guess, for this kind of. Um, uh, production process, and I will give a, a comparison with other technologies. Color capability, five over five, you can have um, color um, gamut expanding cut, uh, spot colors, excuse me, or there could also be a, a brand color that you need. You can switch a color station in about 15 minutes quite easily. You can have a different color setup front to back, why not? Um, there is no fixed sheet size or frame size, so it's, it's a full rotary process, so you can print endless images. The um, fact that it's single pass duplex gives you a limited footprint, has advantages in registration, no turn bar, no double fusing or curing required. Substrate flexibility, I already mentioned that, yeah, it's about um, offset coated stock, it's, it's gloss, it's matted silk, it's digital, it's uncoated offset, um, even some synthetic substrates, polyester films, etc. It doesn't really matter. And then eco-friendliness, also important. I have a separate slide on that because we believe this is very important. 
And because of the width and the unlimited length of the press, it can be a SRE3 printer if you want it to be. It can be a D2 press or it can be even longer. That's the format flexibility. And then of course, yeah, the press is nothing without a good workflow and a digital front end. And that's where our X800 comes in. So again, this is not a technology presentation. There are presentations on, on the web on our virtual showroom that you can, you can download. And I'm more than happy to do that in a separate occasion if you want. So there we can talk a little bit on how the imaging works and how we write an image on a drum and how we transfer the toner to the drum and the, yeah, the toner to the substrate. So it's a full contact process if you want. So we can elaborate on that. But I think the most important thing that with the serious technology, so our latest generation technology, we worked along four major axes to make this technology more perfect. We worked along print media conditioning. Since we have an electrophotographic process, conductivity of the paper is extremely important, so it cannot have excessive moisture. And that's what we do in the PMC. We evaporate excessive moisture to go fast, and we also increase our substrate compatibility by developing a new PMC. So that also is beneficial for waste reduction. For this platform, we developed a whole new toner to go faster, but also to get the wide color gamut that customers are used from our presses. We had to get consumption um, at an acceptable level, develop spot colors, and make sure that the inkability, the inkability was correct. All this while offering the customers the possibility to print coverage independent content. And then the imaging technology, a lot of modifications have been done there to perfect it. One of my favorites personally is the QMM, the quality measurement module. So it's a combination of onboard spectrophotometers and registration cameras that in a closed loop system make actually high quality production effortless for the operator. And then last but not least, we have redeveloped our fusing technology. Fusing technology, very important to get energy consumption under control, uh, to get energy consumption under control, to get the image gloss good, and also to have waste reduction at startup. So all these elements have definitely contributed to a more perfect technology. And this um, resulted in two new machines so far. Two new machines that are the Zycon SX30000, which is our flagship press running 30 meters per minute. And I will get back to speed later because I know that's an important topic. And then we have the SX20000. We actually recently launched that, which is a more entry level press with a reduced speed and a reduced print capacity. need. So these are the two presses that are launched on this new platform. But a press is just one thing, and I already mentioned that. Um, you have substrate support, which is very important. So a wide range of substrates that needs to be reported. That goes together with an online print media portal for our customers to download press settings. Yeah, a workflow is indispensable. It, it's, a, it's a very ex, um, extensive workflow that has not only yeah, the pre-flighting, the impositioning, the ripping and the color management on board, but also around that a whole suite of applications to optimize variable print data, and other effects or other elements, excuse me, of, of the workflow in graphic arts. Next element of this complete technology stack, if you want, is the toner technology. And toner technology, our dry toner technology, is of course a waterless process, which that's not the only reason why it's eco-friendly. It's eco-friendly because we produce our presses um, in green toner uh, plant, let's say, so 100% green energy, the same for our assembly of our machines. Because we are in the food business, our toner complies with a whole host of regulations that are even too much for the graphic arts industry, let's say. But very important is the de inkability And the inkability make no mistake about it, not every print technology is suited for that. And I would like you to, to offer you the opportunity to download our free and, and yeah, white paper on sustainable printing, because sustainable printing is more than just printing on FSE certified paper. It has a lot more. And I think it's important that you educate yourself and take a look at the different printing technologies and how do they perform in the inkability process to make sure that we don't need to keep introducing virgin fibers into the paper production process. So very interesting. It's, it's an objective um, 
technology uh, white paper. So feel free to download it and, and to read it. After the press, the toner, the workflow, etc., there is, of course, some pre and post equipment that we either partner up with vendors or we develop ourselves. And we have a whole team of specialists ready to integrate third party equipment, to integrate third party software for our customers, to do consulting and audits, and also to accelerate their, um, their yeah, let's say, their functioning of the press and make sure that they have enough volume and even more volume. Now, you'll probably say, well, uh, Dimitri, thank you. Um, um, we dialed in. This is all interesting stuff, but um, there is a, you're not talking about an important topic, and that's, uh, I can call it the elephant in the room, and that's inkjet, right? Because I've been talking about dry toner, uh, dry toner technology. This is what we have chosen for graphic arts uh, business. So let me first start with positioning these technologies. Um, we honestly believe that these technologies are complementary and will coexist for well, within the foreseeable future, at least. Offset is definitely remains the champion in productivity and cost for high volume static print manufacturing. Inkjet, on the other hand, is a productivity and cost champion for high volume variable print manufacturing, but it has some limitations or some disadvantages. And I will get back to that. It is about image quality, it is about substrate compatibility, it is about investment level, it is about floor, plin, uh, floor print, etc. And then you have Dicon, which we believe for short and mid runs and for quick turnaround jobs as the USP of offering the highest quality on a wide variety of media. And that's the theory. But in practice, I can tell you, we see from customers that they actually, they work in, in complementary these technologies. And you can talk about the face deployment, for example, where in direct mail, you do the mass mailing for Inkjet and Inkjet, for example, to create awareness. And based on the response, you create a high value piece printed on a Zycon, for example, where you use thick stock coated media, media, brand colors, et cetera, high photographic quality images, and that the goal is customer acquisition or retention. So again, this is our opinion. They are complementary, but don't trust my word. Have a look at our free white paper that was written by Inkjet Insight. So I don't think it can be more objective than that. So where they actually position our technology within the inkjet space and being, yeah, let's say, an inkjet institution with a lot of knowledge, we were quite honored that they took on the challenge and positioned the technology. So please read that, get educated and inform yourself on that. They, of course, make the distinction between all the different systems on the market. And then they recognize that inkjet has a few challenges, huh? just like toner has a few challenges. So there is no perfect technology. But I'd like to use this, um, this forum to debunk a few myths, if, if I want, or some prejudices that I, I, I hear a lot. And, and let me start with the first one. It, it's um, dry toner is slow. Um, well, when you say that something is slow, it's always in relation to something else. Right? Um, so let me first start saying that speed is not the same as productivity. It's indeed 30 meters per minute. But if you look at it, it's, it's more than 2,500 B2 sheets per hour four over four or five over five, Zycon doesn't really care, 404 ppm, no speed hit on number of colors used, no speed hit on resolution, no speed hit on coverage. It's actually quite a compelling value proposition if it's even faster than some of the inkjet feed, um, uh, I'm sorry, sheet fed inkjet presses uh, on the market. So I think speed is an interesting parameter, but I also have to look at another thing. And it's a separate session in itself, but I'd briefly like to highlight it here. It's a concept of OEE, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, and it's penetrating our industry from other industries. What OEE does, it looks at availability, at performance and quality, and it's actually a product of those three factors. So it's not an average, but it takes into account those three items of your investment. And if you look at it, then you can see, of course, the availability you can see the potential production time. And that is what you see on the spec sheets. That's what we put on the spec sheets. That's what the vendors put on the spec sheets. And that's usually, unfortunately, what is being considered in a lot of cases for an investment decision. But then you should look, what is my actual production time? Uh, what is my waiting time, change over time, job changes? Do I have to wait for papers? Do I have to wait for the pre-press department? Uh, don't. I don't have enough volume, so my press is standing still, for example, then it already becomes a first step. 
looking at the actual production time. Then you add to that your performance, which is the theoretical output speed versus the actual output speed. And that could mean, for example, that your press has to slow down when you go to high resolution or that it has to slow down when you have to go to a specific type of stock or a specific coverage level, right? So that also has to be deducted. And then you have your actual output volume of which not everything is sellable because you have some scrap where you have to do some rework or some startup waste, et cetera. And then you can get to your good product. So I, my message would be is to ask your vendor, if it's Icon or anyone else, ask your vendor to investigate and dive deeper than just, um, than just the, only the concept of linear nominal speed. Second one, and I'm briefly looking at the time now. Am I still okay? Yes. Dry toner is all technology. Something I hear frequently. Um, well, I, I hope I, I, I showed you in one of the earlier slides that it's not really old. It's actually brand new. It's, it's released last year. Huh? But anyway, we are on the fifth generation. You don't have to take my word for it. I think a good way of looking at any technology and the state of the technology is looking at a patent landscape. So how many patents are filed? How much research is still being done on this technology? And then when you look at inkjet versus EP, which is in this case, electrophotography, limited to our playing field. So I'm not talking about 3D printing or printed electronics, I'm talking about graphic arts and, 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 and all the graphic applications. Then there was a time where the patents was almost one to one. And still now you can see that even in 2020, a big number of patents, and not, it's not only us, by the way, <laughs> that were still filed for electrophotography. So I don't think this technology is old or dead or anything like that. Next one, dry toner is expensive, right? Um, now this is again, this. I'd love to do another session of, uh, of an hour on, on this. Um, I think what I'd like to bring here as a message, and this is a, a, an anonymized case actually that, that we worked on recently, when you look at the, at the red graph, you can see the Zycon configuration, print cost versus uh, volume. And then we compare that to a generic roll-to-roll -roll inkjet device with, that, uh, with a lot of features and a lot higher speed, obviously. And there we could see that for moderate coverage on a number of, um, of papers, uh, the crossover point was at a certain point, it was here uh, roughly at 1.5 million pages per month. There was a crossover point. Now, depending on the type of application and the volume and the coverage and the paper requirements, et cetera, that crossover point shifted, especially if we went uh, to higher coverage and the press needed to slow down, you know, the things. And then the crossover point moved considerably to the right, roughly around 3 million. And in some cases, we've seen that it all even goes up to 5 million. So I think it's very difficult to answer because I sometimes get this question, where is the crossover point? without knowing the customer situation, without knowing and looking at what's be below the surface of the iceberg, all the costs uh, that are related to the total cost of ownership. So I think that's very important. Now, I want to even go a little bit further. What if I told you that even if the crossover point in my previous slide is reached, in some cases it even is worthwhile going beyond that. So when the unit of expressing a value of digital printing is not only money. So on the left-hand side, it's very easy, right? Then you have the value of money, so toner is cheaper, so we go for toner. On the right-hand side, you would say, yeah, I go for inkjet because inkjet is cheaper. But there is a concept of what I like to call the value of quality, security, and convenience. And what does that mean? Well, just imagine that convenience, security, and quality is that you don't need to worry about ink coverage. You can print whatever application you want. You don't have to tune your press or tune your substrate. You just go. You can use the same paper that you use in your offset plan. So the same rolls that you use, you can put them on your press. Don't worry about size or impositioning because you can still print your BT, B2 uh, sheets and don't have to go to B3, for example. You can keep printing the same offset quality without any speed reduction or any modifications. You don't have to be careful about designing your documents that you don't have a high coverage image when you print duplex on both sides. And your costing is still very easy because your ink consumption does not change depending on the substrate you use. With dry toner, 
you don't have any penetration or no blocking, so the donor consumption is the same on whatever media. So these are a few of the things that I call the value of um, security, quality, and convenience. Now I'm almost at the end, um, and this is a slide, but I'm sure you will get the presentation. It's a slide from IT Strategies if you ask. Yeah, well, okay, but Dimitri, where, where does this press fit, right? I, I looked at all the competitions, so where are you? This is more or less where this machine is positioned, uh, the SX30000 on serious technology, where we used uh, play that, um, sorry, in the zone of value, if you want to call it again like that. Um, so you can see all the different, uh, different machines there. There's also a white paper that you can download on that where you can see the positioning. Right? Um, so to close off, I think um, the main message is that one size fits all, I, I don't think so. I think you have to create a zone of value for yourself because it's always in relation to your environment, to your priorities, to your specific needs. If you're interested in having a fifth color, is that important for it to serve your customers, for example, or brand color? Well, then you have to take that into account. Do you have enough volume for the CAPEX required? Um, is sustainability important for you? Do you want to, to, to be compliant with the inkability? Do you want to offer that to your customers? Do you want to give an idea of carbon footprint per page? Um, do you change a lot of uh, substrates? Do you want to print on glossy stocks, on matte stocks? Do you want to print on offset papers? Uh, format, is that important for you? So all these parameters, I think you have to have to build your own, depending on your own, um, yeah, let's say important uh, items, you can build your own environment. So looking at the time, I think we have um, two more minutes uh, for the q and um, I don't know if there are any questions at the moment. In any case, feel free to put them in the chat. And if I cannot uh, reply, right now. Um, this is my email address, so um, that should be on the next slide. There it is, dimitri.vanegaver at flintgroup.com. Feel free to drop me an email and it will be my pleasure to, uh, to answer to, uh, to your questions individually.